Thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As, it in as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever. Praise the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Psalms 77, verses 7 through 12. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercy? Say, Lord. And I said, This is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Again, I just read Psalm chapter 77, verse 7 through 12. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Peace be unto you in the name of Jesus. Peace. Peace to everyone that's watching on Facebook Live. Peace to everyone that was real watching on YouTube. It's a blessing to stand before you today in the Lord's Sabbath day. There's no real new faces here today. It's kind of thin today, too. I guess a lot of people are scared of the COVID, which I am mad. But uh, peace and blessings to everybody that's watching at home, all the new viewers that's watching at home. If there are any, and welcome to Israel, the Church of Jesus, where we read line upon line, precept upon precept to get an understanding of the matter. Today, I'm going to do a lesson that's a little bit close to home. Um, I titled it, Rule Your Spirit, The War Within Oneself. Rule Your Spirit. Rule Your Spirit. See, uh, the this message is dealing with your with the mental state of, you know, pretty much continuing to walk despite of certain circumstances. Um, we have to be able to, you know, everything, the Lord's control of everything. Everything works for the benefit of the Lord, no matter what. No matter if it's good, no matter if it's bad. Everything works for the benefit of the Lord. For an example, you know, like David, like I, I always mention this, David committed adultery with the Bathsheba and committed murder. The Lord killed the child that came from David and Bathsheba, but then turned around and gave him Solomon, which became, you know, one of the wisest kings, or if not the wisest king ever. So everything works for the benefit of the Lord, no matter if it's bad or good. You know, what we have to do is something that David did is that even if we do make a mistake and we start getting chastised for that mistake, we have to continue to rule our spirit. We have to stay on par, I mean, on, on, on par with the Lord, keeping the Lord's statutes and commandments no matter what. A lot of times we try to do things ourselves because we find ourselves in a situation we trying to you know get out of ourselves, especially me. I find myself in a situation, I'm hungry, I'm gonna do everything I can to eat. You know, until there's literally nothing I can do to kind of like that, that that song, you know, you just gotta stand and just deal with, with what it is. Sometimes, you know, trying to do things on your own accord isn't the best way to do it. Because it usually leads to sin. That once it leads to sin, then everything is prolonging your blessings. So that's why this right here is called rule your spirit, the war within. Because you got, <coughs> within yourself there's a war. 
that that's the war that is within yourself, you know, rather than either sitting back and letting the Lord do what he needs to do, or you try to do things on your own accord, which usually lead to sin. We're going to start this off at Proverbs 4. It's a, little, it's a short lesson, only 15 scriptures. I'm not that much of a talker. So, but we'll see how this goes. Proverbs 4, and pick it up at verse 20. Proverbs 4 and verse 20. Go ahead. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Okay, he said, my son, attend to my words and incline thy ear to my sayings. What is his words? That's this Bible. All right, the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is considered his words. So he said, pay attention to my words and incline thine ear to my sayings. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Verse 21. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For what? For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Uh-huh. So let them not depart from thy eyes, so you continue to look upon this word every day, every night. Now, I know a lot of us, that's what we are doing. And that's what we have been doing. But take it from me, you know... Once you start going through things, like a friend of mine always says, nobody go through the car wash without getting wet, right? Once it's your time to start getting wet, it's kind of difficult to stay in this book because you're too concerned with everything else that's going on. And even if you are looking through the book, it's cutting you up so much, you know, it's take, it, you, you, you have to become a certain person to continue reading it. You know, sometimes you're like, man, I don't know if I'm going to deal with that right now. I'll come back to it later. <laughs> But it be like that, right? My son, attend to my words and call thy ears to my sin. <clears throat> Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Your heart is your mind, right? There's no need to have the commandments in your heart as far as, you know, the, the beaten life that we have in our chest. The heart is in your mind. That's why you meditate on the law day and night. Verse 22, for they, for they are life unto those that find them. So that's another thing I want to key on. It is life. Now, that's the big deal. Like a lot of individuals go through problems and they stray away from the Bible when they should go into the Bible more because it brings you life. It helps you get out of the situation that you're in. But like I said, Satan is crafty. He will have us focusing on everything we need to focus on and not in this book so we can mess up. And health to their flesh. So how is it health? Well, we know this COVID virus thing is going on. We are all still here fine and dandy for the most part. I'm coughing a little bit, but I had this cough for like a month now. So don't think it's that. But nevertheless, it's health to the flesh. The Lord is the one that give all these plagues. Verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Uh-huh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For what? For out of it, for out of it are the issues of life. So out of your heart are the issues of life. So that's something that we need to understand. Like, hey. A lot of the problems that we are in, a lot of problems that we're facing right now, we started it. It's because of us. We are at fault. Out of our heart are the issues of all the life that we're in. Uh, uh, infidelity, uh, uh, money problems, anything that we need to, that, that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, we start that. We begin that. Let's go to James 1. Where's <coughs> my phone go? Can you find my phone? Oh, you got my phone. Okay, James 1. Let's go to James 1. So out of your heart are all the issues of life. So we have to keep it with all diligence. Keep our minds straight throughout the whole time because, hey, if we don't, that's where the problems come in at. This is an oldie but goodie. James, James 1 and verse 13. Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Uh huh. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Uh huh. So if you catch yourself in a situation that's evil, God isn't tempting you. He probably allowing Satan to tempt you, but that's not God Himself. Keep going. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So just like we read in the Proverbs, keep your heart with all diligence, absolutely, because if you don't, then you're going to start. Venturing off to want to focus on the things that you want to focus on. That's why it says, uh, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You wanted something, and since you didn't keep your eyes forward, since you didn't keep your foot forward, now you're going to follow 
along to whatever it is that you want, and that's just going to lead you to death. If it's not with the word, it's going to lead you to death. Verse 15. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Uh -huh. And one lust conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And what else? And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Uh huh. Verse 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Uh -huh. Now let's keep up to verse 3. So, so, first of all, we have to understand that uh, we got to keep our hearts with all diligence. James is pretty much reminding us of that or emphasizing that. James 1 and verse 3. Go ahead. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. Uh-huh. So patience is a big deal. Throughout all of this, we have to be patient. Because look, when David was going through what he was going through, when Job was going through what they were going through, they didn't try to make the situation better themselves. They stayed patient. That's one of the biggest uh, things you have to do when, 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 when you're trying to rule your spirit is you have to be patient on the matter. The trying of your faith work is patience. But what, verse 4? But, but let patience have her perfect work. Uh huh. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Uh huh. You be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, <coughs> let him ask of God. Uh huh. That giveth to all men. Uh huh. Liberally and embraceth not, and it shall be given him. Keep going. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Now, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. There's nothing more difficult than, well, let me take it back. I don't see how much joy the Lord has if he's trying to deal with an individual on faith base, but you wavering. Can you imagine that? Like one moment you're doing something uh, with the Lord, you, you're trying to keep the commandments. Next moment you're thinking of something different. Then you're going back and forth. you messing up your own blessing. It's kind of difficult for any blessing to occur. We have to understand Satan is walking around up and down the world seeking who he can devour. And if you wavering and you double minded he absolutely going to take advantage of that and you might be okay for a second but just like how it said in Matthew once you lose your faith again it's going to be seven more demons coming in taking hold of, taking hold of that house and it's going to be more difficult for you to get out of that situation that you're already in you got to follow me yeah. so you can't be wavering at all you got to stay on top of your faith if any of you lack wisdom let him ask God give him a break then uh, verse 6 but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers like a wave of sea driven with the wind and tossed. Keep going. For let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. Uh -huh. So you can't think you're receiving anything of the Lord if you are double-minded. Absolutely not. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's what it said in verse 8. Keep going. Verse 8. Yeah, we'll be verse 8. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Uh-huh. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Uh -huh. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. But, but also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. All right, we got into something else. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10. So right now we're just getting a little, little bit of foundation that's all we're getting right now. We're just putting in the foundation. Like I said, this is going to be a quick lesson. I was in the middle of something while trying to put this together. So forgive me. But nevertheless, we, we're seeing already that uh, we're seeing already that you are in control of your whole destiny. Pretty much. That's what we read in Proverbs 4. Out of, your, out of the heart, or the uh, you got to control your heart because out of it is the issues of life. So once you be able to control your mind and control how you handle situations, a lot of things will work to the benefit no matter what. Like I said, God is in control of everything. So we try to sometimes put things in our own hands because, I mean, some of us are alphas. Some of us don't like to sit down with our hands tied behind our back. Like I'm, I'm the chief individual regarding that. I'm always trying to do something. But sometimes the best thing you can do to rule your spirit and, and take control of the situation is to let things be and be patient. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. So this is one of the main reasons we have to be patient because we can't do everything. Go ahead. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ uh -huh. who in presence and base among you 
but being absent and bold towards you. Uh huh. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Uh huh. Verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh huh. So even though we're walking in the flesh, we are not warring after the flesh. We actually warring against principalities and wickedness of high places. So we have to understand. So we have to understand that whatever situation that we're in, that Satan is actually involved in it. The Lord is actually involved in it. And we, if we try to do too much of our own, then we could be inter, uh, intermingling in the whole process and making things worse than what we already start off to be. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For what? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But what? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh-huh. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. We're casting down all that stuff. All of our minds, we be taking control of it again. Which comes, which uh, represents of us ruling our spirit. Ruling our mind, taking control of our mind. Because that's the war between ourselves is our spirit. Casting down imaginations and every, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Keep going. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing in captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Everything that goes in our mind should be under the obedience of Christ. Everything. And that's how we cast down imaginations. Verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. Uh-huh. Now let's go to uh let's go to Luke 22. We're gonna see an, an example of this. We're gonna go to Luke 22. Luke 22. We're gonna see a quick example of this of an individual. Not ruling his spirit. We, I took this out of the lesson. I should have put it back in. Uh, but we know in 1 Peter that the Lord is walking about. I mean, Satan is walking about seeking who he may devour. And an unstable man, as we read in James, right, is unsteady in all his ways. So we're going to look at an example of this. Luke 22 and verse 1. 22 and 1. Go ahead. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Uh huh. That's, that's what's coming up now. We do the Passover. We don't do the Easter or anything. So it's coming up now. Verse two. And the chief priests and scribes saw how they might kill him, kill Jesus. So now they sitting here. The chief priests and scribes are coming together, trying to figure out how to kill Jesus. Because he was murdered. You know, he didn't just die because he had the COVID virus or something. They literally murdered him. So keep going. For they feared the people. Uh huh. Then enter Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot. Then enter Satan into Judas, surname Judas, surname Iscariot, being of the number twelve. So Judas always had problems with financial gain. He was a thief. He wanted money the whole time, and he just playing alone, right? And the whole time he's sitting here playing church. But the whole time he, he he's in the back trying to get financial gain. So he saw an opportunity and the priest saw the opportunity and Satan got in the midst of it. So this individual did not rule his own. He, he, he did not rule his spirit because Satan ended up coming in the midst of it and taking advantage of this situation. Then enter Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot. Keep going. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto how, them. How he might betray Jesus. Keep going. And they were glad and covenant to, to give him money. Uh-huh. So he did all this for filthy lucre's sake. He did all of this for money. So we now we 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 reading this on the page, and it seems probably, you know, we probably read it a thousand times, but nevertheless, this stuff happened to us all the time without us even knowing. We might get in an argument and all of a sudden we're saying things we don't want to be saying. We're doing things we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be doing because Satan came in the midst of it. He, he, he became to take over of our spirit. But we have to be able to see this and take advantage of it before it gets too late. 
And they were glad and coveted to give him money, verse 6. And he promised and saw opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Uh -huh, so at this time, he decided to betray Jesus. So this is an example of someone not ruling their spirit, not ruling their mind. Let's go to Proverbs 23 now. Like I said, this is going to be a real quick lesson. I didn't expect a lot of people to be here in the first place. But uh, <laughs> y'all here. I might have to throw some scriptures up in here to make it longer. <laughs> Proverbs 23 and, and uh, verse 1. Proverbs 23 and verse 1. Proverbs 23 and verse 1. So this right here is like a little around about way. But nevertheless, we're going to read it. We just go ahead and read it. You got you to gotta, you gotta be focused on who, you, who you're dealing with. You got to know who you're dealing with. You got to know how to deal with them. All of that deals with ruling your spirit. Proverbs 23 and 1. Go ahead. When thou sittest to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what it what it is before thee. Uh -huh. When you sit down eating with the individual or ruler, individual, consider what is before thee. Consider who you're dealing with. Consider what's going on. Because of what? Keep going. And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. And he that puts a knife to your throat, if you think, if you all about the appetite, if you're only about the food, and you're not focusing on the individual you're dealing with, right? When you, when thou sittest to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. If that's all you're focusing on, you think that's all you're there for, you might as well put a knife to your throat because... Killing yourself will be better uh, outcome than what is about to happen. Same thing with Judas. In a sense of Judas. Judas, I mean, the Lord already knew who Judas was. He picked Judas for a specific reason because it was written that he had to die. But we have to be mindful of who we're dealing with at the same time because, hey, how they speak, how they deal with you, uh, what they say to you is all about uh, is, is all about how they rule their, their own spirit. We'll see it. Put a knife to your throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Verse three. Be not desirous of his dainty. Uh -huh. Don't be don't don't worry about what food that's on the table because it's not about the food. Keep going. For they are deceitful meat. Uh huh. Keep going. Labor not to be rich. Seize from thine own wisdom. Then he turned around and said, "Labor not to be rich." Where is this coming from? Because this has everything to do with the topic at hand. You think. Is about food, but you're not paying attention of the whole circumstance. Keep going. Verse off. Will thou set thine eyes upon th that which is not? Uh huh. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away. Yeah, yeah you, they fly away. Yeah, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Uh huh. So it's not all about the money. If you if if you got your eyes on the money, you got to understand that's going to be taken away. So it shouldn't be all about that. Verse six. Eat thou not the bread of him that have an evil eye. Uh -huh. Don't eat the bread of him that have an evil eye. So we all know that, hey, man should not live by bread alone, by every word about, out of the mouth of God. So he is talking about something different here. He's not just talking about bread itself. He's talking about the dealings with individuals. Because all of this had to do with you ruling your own spirit. Eat thou not the bread of him that have an evil eye. What is the evil eye? The evil eye is, is, is dealing with somebody who is taking every opportunity to come up on somebody, like Judas. Judas had an opportunity to, to come up on Jesus for some gain, and he took that. We can read in Deuteronomy that uh, if the year of Jubilee is coming, you know, the owner should not have an evil eye to the servant and try to do something crafty to keep them as a servant for some years. So the evil eye is just the individual who's trying to come up with somebody. So eat thou not the bread of him that have an evil eye. Keep going. Neither desire, though his dainty meats. Don't desire all the delicacy of meats. Because of what? Keep going. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that's the thing. As he think in his heart, that's the individual he is. So you have to understand that if you're dealing with somebody that's talking a certain way and thinking a certain way, that's their character. As the same for you. If you're in an argument and you're dealing with your significant other 
or you out in the streets and you about to handle something, somebody came in your face and you about to snap, you got to think that's the person you are in general. So you think you one way, but hey, you faint in adversity, so your strength is small, you actually something totally different. So you have to be able to rule your spirit even in all circumstances. Because here we see an individual coming to eat at a dinner table, and he's warning the individual, be careful who you're dealing with. Because how this individual is thinking is how he represents himself, and that's the person he is. And you want to mess up and fall in that same in that same category as him. He said, for as he thinketh in his heart, so he is, keep going, eat and drink, say if he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Uh -huh. Eat and drink, say he, so he acting like he's your friend, but his heart is not with you at all. It's all a setup. Verse 8, just keep going. The morsel so which thou hast eaten, shall thou vomit up, uh -huh. and lose thy sweet word. <laughs> you see that? You said that the morsel that you're going to eat the piece of meat that you're going to eat, you're going to end up vomiting. You're going to vomit it up, and your sweet words going to come up with it. You're going to lose yourself dealing with this individual. All because this is all a part of ruling your own spirit. See, ruling your own spirit is not just, I mean, of course, it's how you deal in certain situations, but it's also knowing who you are dealing with. You could, if you're dealing with an individual that's making you snap, Hey, bro, you might, you might you should not be around that individual yep. because that's no way you can control yourself. Eventually, you're going to do something you ain't supposed to, exactly. and the whole game going to be messed up. As we see here, he said, the morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up. So whatever you ate is going to be as if you didn't eat nothing. You're going to vomit it up, and you're going to lose thy sweet words as well. Let's go to let's give let's go to uh, Proverbs sixteen now. Let's go to Proverbs sixteen. Proverbs sixteen. Proverbs sixteen. We're gonna pick it up at verse one. We only got a few verses of this one too. Proverbs sixteen and verse one. Go ahead. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So no matter what situation that's happening, like I said before, the Lord's control of everything. So you can act right and the Lord will deal with you accordingly. Or you can act wrong and the Lord is going to use you evilly to handle somebody else. But nevertheless, everything belongs to the Lord. He's controlling everything, kind of like, the, kind of like Pharaoh. The Lord raised Pharaoh up specifically just so he can show his power. Just like Judas. Judas was chosen specifically for that circumstance to give up Jesus for some money. So now you have to understand in the art of ruling your own spirit, how are you going to be used by the Lord? Either you're going to allow Satan to get with you, and he's going to use you one way or the other way. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Keep going. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Everything is clean in his own eyes. We can read in Luke, I believe it is, he was talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, and he said, hey, you guys justify yourselves. And you guys not even understanding what's going on, but you're trying to justify yourself. That's what he's pretty much saying. He said, all the ways of a man are clean in their own eyes. They will sit here and be like, oh, well, I sin, you sin, so it don't even matter. I'm going to do what I need to do anyway if the Lord will have mercy. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. Just because you're trying to make yourself clean because somebody else messed up. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord way of the spirit. That's what we got to be mindful of is the Lord. Nobody has any fear of the Lord anymore, so they do anything all willy-nilly, thinking that it's okay because they're trying to justify their own ways. Verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord. And thy thoughts shall be established. So now we get into how we have the how how we can rule our own spirit. We have to commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. So it start it start with the works, because we all came here sinners, right? We all was conceived sinners, except for Jesus. He's the only one that wasn't conceived in sin. 
But nevertheless, we all was conceived in sin. We came from our father. Our father's full of sin. So we were conceived in sin. So we have to learn how to rule our own spirit. We have to learn how to fight this war within ourselves. And the only way we can do that is if we commit our works to the Lord. If we commit our, commit our works, everything else will fall into place. If you keep the commandments despite your situation, everything else will fall in. If you look in Job, Job said, though he slay me, I will, I will, keep, my, I will keep my integrity before him. So he continued to focus on his works through the, work, through, the dire situ, through dire situations. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy, thought, and thy thoughts shall be established. Verse 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Uh -huh. So even if you're wicked, the Lord is still going to use you. No matter how that, no matter how that works. Verse 5. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Uh -huh. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Uh -huh. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. So by mercy and truth is iniquity purged. And what? And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So that's how. So this whole fear, that fear is how you commit thy works unto the Lord. So then you can begin to rule your own spirit. Let's go to uh, Genesis 4, and we're going to look at this. We're going to look at an example of this real quick. We're going to go all the way back to Genesis. Genesis 4. Because some individual might say, well, since the Lord controlled everything, since he's controlling everything, so that means I have no free will. So no matter if I'm evil or good, you know what I'm saying, I have no free will. No, that's not the case. You still have a decision no matter... What the situation is to rule your spirit, the Lord is going to use you no matter what. Genesis 4 and 3. We're going to jump into Cain and uh, Abel. 4 and 3, go ahead. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Uh huh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Uh huh. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Uh huh. But unto Cain, into his offering, he had not respect. So this right here is a clear cut picture that, you know, the Lord wants it all. You can't just give him anything and expect him to be okay with it. That's what happened here. Cain just brought anything thinking it's okay. But the Lord didn't have respect of it. But Abel brought the best. So this is an example for us. We have to always bring our best to the Lord. Keep going. And Cain was very wroth. Uh -huh. and, and Cain was mad at the situation. Keep going. And his countenance fell. Uh huh. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Keep going. If thou doest well, should thou not be accepted? So if you do well, should you be accepted? Absolutely. But what? And if thou doest not well, sin life at and the door. And if you choose not to do well, sin life at the door. So it doesn't matter which way you choose, there's something for you. But nevertheless, keep going. And unto thee shall be his desire. And unto thee, unto what? Unto that sin. So on you, so unto thee shall be his desire, meaning the sin. So he's desiring to have you. He'd rather have you come that way. Keep going. And thou shalt rule over him. Uh -huh. And that's all this happened if you don't end up ruling your spirit. If thou dost, if thou dost well, thou shalt not be accepted. And if thou dost not, I mean, if thou dost well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin life at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. So once, once you choose, whatever path that you choose, that's you. Whatever path that you choose, you're going to serve that until, uh, unless the Lord says, matter of fact, let's go to uh, Romans. Let's get real quick. Let me prove what I'm saying. Let's go to Romans uh Let's go to Romans 6 and uh, 15. Romans 6 and verse 15. So Paul going to further explain what we just read in Genesis. Romans 6 and verse 15. Go ahead. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Uh huh. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey... His servants ye are to whom ye obey. Uh-huh. Whether of sin unto death 
or of obedience unto righteousness. So no matter which one you choose, sin lies at the door. So you want to go to the sin, okay, your desire is going to be with him and you will rule over that. That's your cause and uh, the service that you will be obeyed will be sin unto, will be death, rather be sin unto death. My bad, I'm getting confused. My mouth's getting chapter sec too. Know you not that to whom ye yield your servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether it's sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Keep going. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, uh -huh. but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Uh huh. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Keep going. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. All right, now let's go back to Genesis 4. And we're going to read verse 7 again. Genesis 4 and verse 7. Because when he said, hey, you can either do this or you do that, but no matter what you do, Unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. That's going to be who you worshiping until the end, pretty much. Genesis 4 and verse 7. Go ahead. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? Uh-huh. So if you do good, you're going to be accepted absolutely. Keep going. And if thou doest not well, sin life at the sin door. Sin is already there waiting on you. It's already there waiting on you. So you have to pick which way you want to go. Keep going. And unto thee shall be his desire. Uh huh. And thou shalt rule over him. And you're going to rule over whatever decision that you make. That's going to be your decision. You have nobody to blame over that. So a lot of individuals get into certain circumstances and be like, oh, well, she may be doing it because of X, Y, and Z. Hey, that doesn't even matter. That doesn't even matter because you chose that. Like Job, he had the opportunity to go either way. Job's wife said, curse God and die. And he was like, Foolish woman, you gonna sit down somewhere? So he didn't even choose what the route that he chose. That was his desire, and he had to be accountable for that. Like for example, Adam. Adam chose to go with Eve, and now all of us dying until this day. If thou does well, thou shalt not be accepted, and thou does not well, sin life at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now let's go to uh, Proverbs 16 now. Let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 16. Let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 16, we'll do one verse. Verse 32. Proverbs 16 and verse 32. When you get there, bro. Go ahead. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Uh -huh. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And what else? And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Uh huh. And he that ruleth his spirit is mightier than he that taketh a city. So if you control your own situation, if you are able to control your mind, you are one of the strongest individuals around. You are one of the most strongest individuals around. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find this. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Hold on. Nope. Oh, I can't find it. I thought I should have put it down. I wish I had my phone. But nevertheless, he said, uh, verse 32 says, uh, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit than he that taketh the city. And, the, and I like how they had this group together. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, because you have a lot of individuals who can't rule their spirit, who can't control their emotions, are the ones, the quickest ones that get angry so quickly. They get so they get angry so quickly. That don't mean they be, they be one of the weakest ones. And then turn around and say that he that rules his spirit. Is mightier than he that taketh the whole city. All because you are able to control your whole mind state. We're going to see an example of an individual controlling their mind state. Let's go to Job 2 now. 
Now we're going to go to Job again. I used him a lot. We're going to go and read it real quick. Job 2. We're going to look at his situation. And we're going to see how he controlled his spirit. Job 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Job 2. And verse 1. Go ahead. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also uh -huh. among them. So we see that Satan is not part of the sons of God. Right? But they all come to present themselves before the Lord. Because like we read in the lesson, the Lord controlled everything anyways. But you still have a choice. You, you still have a choice to rule your spirit or not. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it. And this is how he is able to uh, take advantage of unstable men and unstable women. Because he's always walking up and down trying to see who he can devour. Verse 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man? Perfect and upright man. Keep going. One that feared God and eschewed evil. Uh-huh. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So we already, uh, we, we jumped in the middle of it. But Job had already started his affliction. All his family died. All his money was taken away. But he still held on to his integrity. So now the Lord is still praising Job to Satan. Regarding this. Keep going, verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord. And said, skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath he will give for his life. Uh -huh. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Uh -huh. Verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. Uh -huh. So the Lord allowed this to happen, but we see that Satan specifically want him to, want uh, 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 Job to curse God to his face. So that's what he's looking for, verse 7. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Uh -huh. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with him, and he sat down among the ashes. Uh -huh. Verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. So now we see that Satan got to the wife, and she got he got to the wife to allow her to, to, to try to manipulate her to go against Job to get what she wants. To mean to get what he wants, which is to curse God and die. But we we're gonna see how Job held on to his spirit, how he ruled his spirit. He controlled his uh, emotions. Verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Uh-huh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. And throughout all this, he didn't sin with his lips at all. He could have easily fight off the handle. I know if I'm sick and somebody talking mess trying to say, bro, I'm snapping. Me personally, and that's something I got to deal with. But we see specifically how he is controlling his spirit. And we have to be able to use that and put that in our own life. Like I like to use myself as an example because I'm sitting here in front of you guys. I hold myself a higher standard than a lot, of, uh, a lot of everybody else. So I use myself as an example, but I know I'm not the only one who will fight off the handle. A lot of us will. But we see clearly that Job, who the Lord said is perfect, did not do this not one time. So we have to measure up to that same level as him, or yes, we, or unless we just plan ourselves. Now let's go to Job 27. And we're going to see the end of the matter. We're going to go to Job 27, which is in the middle of the whole story. But we're going to see his thought process to see if he still held on to his integrity. Because what ended up happening is that all his friends came and started talking bad about him too. Now, so not only do you have your wife coming at you sideways, you got all your friends talking about, oh, well, you did this and you did that. Something must have had happened. He didn't do anything wrong. And then you see, on the other hand, David, which I should throw it up in here. David actually did something wrong, and somebody was still casting stones at him, but didn't even have an understanding of what was happening. And yet David still kept his cool. So no matter how you look at it, 
Somebody could be throwing stones at you. Somebody could not be throwing stones at you. Somebody could be saying things and it's right. Somebody could be saying things and it's not. You just got to hold on your, your, your own integrity. That's what you have to do. You have to hold on your own integrity. Job 27 and verse 1. Go ahead. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, uh -huh. As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul. Keep going. All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Uh -huh. My lips shall not speak wickedness. Nor my tongue uttered deceit. So he's talking back and forth to his friends. And he's like, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Keep going. God forbid that I should justify you. Now, I'm not going to say you're right because you're not right. God forbid. Because I didn't do anything wrong. You guys saying I'm wrong. You guys trying to throw me under the bus. God forbid I say that you're right because I'm, because I'm not. But what? Till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. But until my die, I'm, until I die, I'm gonna keep my feet straight. Until I die, I'm gonna continue doing what I'm supposed to do. Now, this is a very hard thing to do, because, like I said, in the midst of a car wash, everybody gonna try to do something to get themselves out the situation. This is, I mean, that's just how we built. But yet, Job sat back and said, "Nah, I'm gonna continue doing what thus said the Lord." Despite what y'all said. Keep going. My righteousness I hold fast. I'm going to hold fast to my righteousness and what else? And will not let it go. Uh huh. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Uh huh. My mouth will not reproach me so long as I live. So even in the midst of the chaos, he still maintained his, his integrity. He still maintained ruling his own spirit. Now let's go to Romans 8. And we're going to try to get some, uh, some characteristics of how to do this. Because it's easier said than done. And yeah, we all know to you know, keep the commandments, but we're going to try to pinpoint specifics if we can. Romans 8 and verse 5. Romans 8 and verse 5. Because this is actually the war between everybody right here is what's going on in your mind. That's probably one of the first, the, the hardest things is dealing with your mind because it's a process. It's patience. And you might fall a few times. You got some people pointing fingers at you and you got to continue walking. It's embarrassing a lot of times as well, but you got to keep it going. And you, have to have, you just have to learn how to rule your own spirit. Romans 8 and verse 5. Go ahead. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Uh -huh, so they that's after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh and what? But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Uh -huh, so this is one of the key components of ruling your spirit is by keeping your mind on spiritual things. Keeping your mind on heavenly things. All this stuff going to pass. None of this stuff here matters. So you have to keep your eye on the goal. Because those that's mindful of the flesh going to pay attention to the flesh, and those that mindful of the spirit will pay attention to the spirit. Verse one, for me, verse five, verse six, verse six. Verse six. Yes. For to be carnally minded is dead, uh huh. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, uh huh. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. So the carnal mind is enmity between God. So I mean, war against God. This is the war within yourself. This 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 is the mindset that we have. We have that old man and that new man. As soon as you get baptized, that old man isn't dead. That, boy, that old man keeps coming around. And it usually come around once you start to lose control. Which is why I tell you, rule, uh, rule, rule your own spirit. Because once you start losing control, that's when that old man starts coming around. That start, that's when you start doing the things that you used to. Keep going. For it is not subject to the law of God. Uh -huh. Neither indeed can be. Keep going. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So then they are in the flesh cannot please God. Uh, let's go to yeah. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 4 now. Now let's go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 and verse 17. Ephesians 4 and verse 17. You gotta keep your mind on heavenly things. Keep your mind on the commandments. If you meditate on the law day and night, it should be easier. It's gonna start off hard, and even though you still might make some mistakes, 
But the book tells you that, hey, man, just man falls seven times. So it happens. Ephesians 4 and 17, go ahead. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, uh -huh. in the vanity of their mind. So don't walk as everybody else walk, in the vanity of their mind. Doing things that you want to do. The mind, the world that we live in, you can do anything that you want, and it's supposed to be okay. But once you come to the commandments, when you come in the Bible, you can't just do everything you want. And that's, and that's part of controlling yourself. There is no control in the world. That's why they have a hard time keeping the commandments. And you're trying to control them. Verse 18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Having your understanding darkened, being alienated uh, from the life of God, just like Romans 1. Keep going. Through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Because of the blindness of their heart, which is the mind. Once again, it's controlling your mind. Verse 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness uh -huh. to work all uncleanness with greediness. Uh -huh. We just read hey, that the flesh do mind the things of flesh and we see in it here what happens once you mind the things of flesh the Lord will turn you over to that. He will turn you over to that. Just like it said hey, sin lies at the door. It's right there waiting on you. You can be in this walk for 10, 15 years. Sin's still right there at the door waiting on you. And if you die in your sin, that's it. Keep going. Verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. Uh huh. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Uh -huh. Verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Uh huh. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And this is how you do it. Verse 24. And that you put on the new man. You put on the new man. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Uh-huh. Wherefore putting away lying. So now you don't lie anymore. You speak every man truth. Keep going. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Uh-huh. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. See, that's one of the key components of Satan getting in the midst of something. You mad. Now you're not controlling your spirit. Hey, as soon as the sun go down on it, so now Satan has time, or even in the midst of it, Satan has time to come in and, and, and uh, 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 shift the conversation one way or another by getting into, into somebody's mental state. Now somebody's saying something they don't mean. Somebody's going to take it to heart. It's a problem with that. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Keep going. Neither give place to the devil. Right, because that's how you give place to the devil. Keep going. 28. Let him that stole steal no more. Uh-huh. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Uh-huh. So now you're not being idle. 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now you're being careful what you said because like you were reading Matthew, like, like we were reading, reading Matthew out of your mouth, you can see what's going on in your heart. Keep going. But that which is good to the use of edifying, uh -huh. that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Keep going. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. You can absolutely grieve it. Keep going. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh -huh. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and claymore and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And this is how you are take controlling of your spirit. This is how you take control of it. Hey, all that envy you have, all that hatred that you have with somebody, let it go. Let it be. There's no need to do it because now you're just letting Satan come in the midst of it. All that lying, all the breaking of commandments, uh, corrupt communication. All these things is given a place for Satan. Let's go to uh, Romans 7. Now let's go to Romans 7. All these things are given a place for Satan. This is how you take control of your spirit. Because we're not really fighting against one another. I could be arguing with my man Tim. And it's not even Tim that's pulling the strings. It's somebody else behind him that's pulling the strings. Or somebody behind me that's pulling the strings. So we have to understand who we actually fighting against. Right. Romans 7 and pick it up at 14. 
Romans 7 and 14, go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Uh huh. So we know the law is spiritual, but we are carnal. So we're going to have a problem controlling our spirit. It's already going to be an uphill battle for us to control our spirit. For we know that the law is spiritual. That's why a lot of individuals don't tell you don't, don't uh, keep the law because it's spiritual. They don't understand it. Because we are carnal, so we understand. Verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. And now we have Paul letting us know that he deal with the same issues that he have ruling his spirit. Controlling his self. Dealing with the war within himself. He said, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. So the things that I normally would do, somebody talk a mess, I'm a father hand on the hand in the mouth, I'm going to try not to do that anymore. But what I hate, that do I. I'm gonna be humble. I'm gonna turn around. I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let you throw sticks and stones. I ain't gonna say anything to you. He. That's what he's gonna do instead. That's what he hate to do. So he's fighting with his, within himself for the greater good. Verse sixteen. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. And if that's how we thinking, if we trying to do. What we normally would not do, we are considering that the law is good. Verse 17. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Uh-huh. So we still got that sin in us. We still got that old man in us. So we are constantly, daily fighting this man. We are, we're, we're killing him every day. We're killing him every day. And this is how we rule our spirit. Keep going, verse 21. Verse 18. 18. 18. 18, my bad, yeah. keep going. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Uh -huh. So how you perform that good, he find not. So that's one of my other things I have, too. I was in a conversation with an individual a couple of days ago about the Bible. And, and she was like, oh, well, you can just do the, you don't have to do what the Bible say. You can just do what's good. I'm like, well, what is good? We don't know how to do good. He just sitting here telling you we don't know how to do good. He said, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Every man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord, like, like we read before, right? It's different when it comes down to the Lord. So for I know that in my flesh that is that dwell no good thing. For, I will, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So he had to follow the commandments. And this is how he ruled his spirit. He continued to fight himself every day by following this. Verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. Uh-huh. So the good that he would, he do not. But what? But the evil which I would not, that I do. Uh-huh. So we see that he's going back and forth. First he was saying that, hey, for that which I do, I allow not, and I consent that the law is good. Now he's turning around and he's saying, Hey, for the for, for what is good, I don't really do. And, but what is evil, that is what I do. So he had the same problems as everybody else. A lot of people look at the, the cats in the Bible, David, Solomon, and they put them in some type of pedestal, but they're all human just like we were. And they all make the same mistakes as we did. That's why we have it in the Bible to read it. Somebody else made a mistake similar to what we did. We can, read, we can look in the Bible and read it. And we see here that Paul is having this issue. The same way that we are having. Keep going. Verse 20. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Um, pick up at 19 again and go down. 19. Yeah. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not... That I do. Uh -huh. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth uh -huh. in me. Uh-huh. So now it's the sin that's up in me that's continuing to do this. Keep going. 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil was present with me. Uh-huh. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Uh-huh. So in the inward man, I delight in the law of God. That's why the Lord said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
That's why he said, pray that you don't enter into temptation. That's why he's telling you this stuff. Because our flesh is not that, is not that strong as we make it seem like it is. We think we're going to uh, hold up to temptation. And hey, we, a lot of times we don't. A lot of times we don't. And Paul is letting you know he had that same struggle. For I delight in the law of the good. For I delight in the law of God. After the inward man. Keep going. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. That's why it's a war. The war within oneself. It's a war. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. And doing what? And bringing me into captivity. To the law of sin. Which is in my members. So now you, we are under this law of sin. And this law of sin is causing us or is the cause of us not to rule over our spirit. Because we be evil because we can't control ourselves. Now Satan get in the midst of it and we're only making things worse and worse. But I see another law in my members, which is sin, warring against the law of my mind, which is the Bible, I mean, which is the uh, commandments, and bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. 24. O oh, wretched man that I am. O oh, wretched man that I am. Keep going. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Uh huh. Because he knows this is a sinful body. This is death that we're in. We continue to fight this all the time. Who is able to deliver us from this body of death? Keep going. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God. Uh huh. With his mind, he served the law of God, but what? But with the flesh, the law of sin. His flesh, the law of sin. So that's what's happening right now. It's a continued war. 2 Timothy 2. It's a continued war that we have to gird ourselves for every day. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I mean, flesh and blood at all. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So we have to continue to gird ourselves with this every day. That's why the book says, meditate on the law day and night. It's telling you to do that, even in the midst of it. Meditate on the law day and night. Pray three times a day. Even in the midst of it. Because that's the only way we can get out of it. That's the only way we can get out of it. Because you're going to get wet no matter what. David, he made it to the kingdom. Abraham made it to the kingdom. Elijah, they all up in it. But we see that, hey, they still got wet. They came out straight, up, beat up, hurt. It's no difference for us. Matter of fact, it might be even worse, than, worse off than us. Because now the whole world is out of whack. At least in, in their days, people were still trying to do what the Bible says. We all the way out of whack. And we're the only ones that's trying to do it. So it's kind of flipped to the sense that uh, they want us to snap. So they can point their finger at us and be like, yeah, see, you're just like us. So now we have to be what the Lord wants us to be is blameless. 2 Timothy 2, and pick it up at verse 1. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, and verse 1. Go ahead. Though therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So we have to be strong in this. Like, we, we, this is not for play at all. Like, we really have to be in this book every day and strive for this because this is a war. This is literally a war. And if we lose, we're going to be tormented for the rest of our life. All because we can't control ourselves. Can you imagine that? You're sitting up there, you're being judged, and the Lord's like, man, you almost had it. But since you broke those uh, Ten Commandments like Moses did, you're going to lake of fire. Just because you can't control your anger. That's a problem. And that's something completely in your control. That's what I'm trying to point out with this lesson, that no matter what is happening... This is all completely in our control. Because the Lord controls everything, in a sense. It all depends on how we react to it. Everything works for the good of the Lord. Everything. Like with uh, that man in Judges, that, that uh, Levite. His wife went to go play the harlot. His concubine played the harlot. He went to go get her. Nevertheless, she still ended up dying, cutting the body up 12 pieces, all for... To get out uh, the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah out of uh, 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 Judah, out of Benjamin. So even if it's a bad situation, it still turned out for the good. But we see the Levite, he held on to his integrity. He didn't put her away and start cussing her out and making a fool and go find somebody else and just, oh man, I can, I can have multiple wives. I'm going to get like 10 more. Forget her. 
Nah, he was like, I'm going to go grab her, and I'm going to handle this situation appropriately. Nevertheless, it still works in the benefit of the Lord. So that's why we have to continue the, this whole walk as well. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, verse 2, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Uh -huh, so the thing that you heard, be strong in it. Fight for it. Contend for the faith. Keep going. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Uh-huh. Though therefore in your hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now who tells you, who, who heard of that in, in, in these Sunday churches? He said, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Become a soldier in Christ Jesus. Hey, if you're in battle, you're going to get hurt. Verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. So that's another way we can learn how to rule our spirit and win this war within ourselves. It's not being entangled with the affairs of this life. There's no need to be a part of that. Because that's only going to mess us up. No man that wore the, no man that wore the, entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Keep going. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. That he may please Jesus Christ that has chosen him to be a good soldier. Keep going. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet it is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. So this is not really the case in our day. <laughs> But it's saying that if a man also strive for mastery, meaning like in a contest, like saying football, he trying to win the championship in football, he is not crowned except he do it lawfully. I mean, that's a little bit different because Patriots nowadays, they <laughs> cheat all the time. <laughs> Golden State started cheating a little bit. So that's just a little bit different in our day. But nevertheless, that's the truth. That's the truth that, hey, if a man also strive for masteries, he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. So we have to strive lawfully to get that same crown, that crown of masteries. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9, and let's see Paul talk about it in a little bit more detail. First, because law, because Paul talked about this war within himself often in the Bible. <coughs> he talked about this often. 1 Corinthians 9, and 24. 9 and 24. Go ahead. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. Uh-huh. So everybody is in, is, in, is in this competition to get this prize. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. Keep going. But one receiveth the prize. Uh-huh. So run that ye may obtain. Uh-huh. So we all run as we can obtain. It. Keep going. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Uh huh. So every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Right? He has self control in everything. He's in the weight room two or three times a day. He's eating right. He's in the practice field. He's studying field tape. He's doing everything that he needs to do to control himself to win this prize. Right? You know, those, those, those track stars in the Olympics, they don't win just because they just wake up one day. This is a long-going training from them. They're probably training right now. It's the corona out there, and they're still out there training. Get it. Keep going. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Uh-huh, and they get it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we do what? But we an incorruptible. But we trying to get that incorruptible crown, so we should have that same self-control. We should have that same temperate. We should be able to rule our spirit and continue to focus on the things that we need to focus on despite the, the distractions. You got, you got some cats with groupies outside that window every day. Some fall for it, some don't. We have to have that same mindset to rule our spirit. That's what he's talking about here. And every man that striving for masteries is temperate which means they have self-control. It's temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Verse 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Every time I read this, man, I think of, uh, what's that movie called? The dude just punches the air, boys in the hood. I always think about that. <laughs> I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so I'm not running as if, I'm, I'm, no, he actually running, trying to win the race. 
He knows what he's what, what he's in there for. So he has self-control and he put himself in what in the situation he needs to to win. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty. So fight I, not as the one beating the air. He's not just swinging at the air. He's actually trying to hit something. He's trying to win this. Verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. He bring his body into subjection. Who was teaching this in the Sunday churches? A subjection under what? The subjection of the Bible. The subjection of the commandments. He's keeping his body under subjection so he can get this, so he can get this incorruptible crown. Are we doing that? Are we honestly doing that? Or are we not ruling our spirit? Are we losing this war within ourselves? Because every time somebody says something, baby mama tripping, I'm going to lose my mind. Where my kids at? No. You got, it's, a, it's a way you got to handle everything. It's a way you have to handle it. But I keep my body under subjection and bring it to... Uh, I, uh, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Keep going. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And that represents every single one of us up in here. We are preaching to somebody. Can you imagine we teaching somebody to, hey, man, you got to keep the Sabbath day. But we in a lake of fire line with them because we didn't control ourselves. We became a castaway just like everybody else. All because of what? We didn't rule our spirit. He told Cain, send life at the door. You think that's just for him? He told Peter, hey, Satan want to shift you as wheat. You think that's just for Peter? That's for all of us. And the same tricks that he's using in the Bible is the tricks that he's using now. So why aren't we more hip to the situation? Why we still have anger problems? Why we still going off the ledge? It should not be. But it's evident we're not in this book day and night. We don't take it as seriously as they did. Because Paul said that, hey, he's fighting not as if he's swinging the air. He's actually trying to hit you. He's trying to win this because he don't want to be a castaway. Now let's go to uh, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. We're almost done. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Hebrews 4, pick it up at verse 6, just because. Hebrews 4, 6, go ahead. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. Uh -huh. Talk about the rest. Some must enter into the rest. Keep going. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. They was unbelief. They didn't rule over their spirit. They had that spirit of unbelief. Even though the Lord did all those wonderful works on them, they still didn't believe. Same thing with us. The Lord brought us out of a lot of bad situations. I can speak for it. I mean, a lot of people don't know my past or whatever, but hey, I came a long way. So I know that the Lord is still around. So... I don't want to be at like them for unbelief. I get cast away. But keep going. Seven. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Uh, no harden your hearts. Keep going. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Uh huh. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Uh -huh, so there still remain a, a rest on the people of God. Keep going. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath seized from his own works, as God did from his. That's how God rested. His, he ceased from his works. So once we rest, we're ceased from our works. And we're not resting because we're still working every day. We're still trying to keep these commandments. We're still putting things, uh, uh, we're still trying to put anything together. None of us is perfect, so we see that we're still working. Because of that, verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into, let us fight to enter into this rest. Let us run to enter into this rest. This is a labor-intensive activity. This is something that needs to be done every day. And like I said, some of us might be doing it, some of us might not be. But really, once you go through the thick of it, once you go through the uh, car wash and you're starting to get wet, 
that's when you really need to do it. That's when you need to pick it up because that's when Satan is trying you most of all. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Keep going. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Uh huh. For the word of God is quick. For the word of God is quick. Brought it right back to the Bible. For the word of God is quick. Keep going. And powerful. And powerful. Keep going. And sharper than any two edged sword. Keep going. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Brought it right back to ruling your own spirit. Controlling your heart. Because the Bible will make it a discerner of what you should and should not do. That's why you need to meditate it on day and night. You will react a certain way, but since you read that verse earlier, that's still in your head, so you're going to react a little bit differently. But if we're not doing that, we're leaving Satan up for grabs to do whatever he wants. Doing whatever it is he wants. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. And the intents of the heart, you know what the saying goes, but the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So hey, the scripture would the, the scripture would even put the good intentions up to up, up for debate about what you should and should not do. Now let's go to uh first Peter one. This is the last one. 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1 and 13. First Peter 1 and verse 13. Go ahead, bro. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Okay, now understanding all that, we need to gird up our loins of the mind. Get our mind ready. Because that's what it's all about. You can work out as much as you want to. You can have the biggest muscles in the world. But if you can't control yourself, you're going to be in Lake of Fire doing bench, bench, bench pressing like everybody else. Right? It has nothing to do with anything. That's why we have girt up of the loins of our mind. Be strong as a soldier, like you said in Timothy. Like Paul said in Timothy. Keep going. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then while, while you girding up your minds, you hoping that you make it. Because even if you gird up your minds, you're still being judged of things that happened in the past, and you might even slip up. The Lord might kill you in your sin right then and there. So hey, even with you girding up your minds, there's still a hope. There's a hope there's a hope for grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Uh-huh. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust. So you ain't doing things that you used to. Keep going. But as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Uh-huh. So in all manner of conversation, what you're saying, what you're doing should be holy. You want to take the Lord's name, you have to be holy or you might be taking his name in vain. That's something we have to understand. That he said, don't take the Lord's name in vain at all. And we know what that is about. You're doing something, then you're going back door. So you have to be holy, for he is holy. Verse 16. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Are we still